if you're not buying a Latang, a Malkin, or a Crosby jersey in Pittsburgh, who are you buying? Jake Gensel. Really? Probably. That won't be on like a top 50 list. No, of course not. Of so, course not. So you need to sell something in that Cody account. CC. Yeah. I don't want to Just talk to about burn him. It. I don't want to talk <laughs> about him ever again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for saving us a couple of years as I'd said, but my God. Actually, well, you know I what? Mean... Listen, he was part of Tony D'Angelo's last game in the NHL. And it was one of his shots that hit the net. Like it hit the net, like it hit the goalie. And if the goalie wasn't in the net, it would have went in the hockey net and he would have been a goal scorer in the national league. But so I'll give him a grace for today, but like, I will never lose the sight of him pulling the puck as a right-handed D across the blue line and firing the puck as far right as he could. So I don't want to talk about him. So we're going to leave. Remember when Cody CC scored in his second game as a Toronto Maple Leaf and people were like, wow, this guy might be able to be an offensive force for us this year. He could put up 10 goals. I think that was his only goal. I think that was his only goal of the season. Maybe one. I think other. he had a better chance of scoring 10 in our own net than he did of scoring 10. Maybe. For us. Maybe. Honestly, was, if he was third line pairing, would have been a lot better than if he was playing with Morgan, Morgan Riley. Yeah. Wouldn't have made it much better, but it would have been better for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's get into that for one second. I just want to. I just want to bring light. I had this conversation with my brother the other day. Okay. I have a thing against Ben Bishop. I think for six foot seven and add the gear on top of him, he should be able to find like three different positions in which he can contort his body to make sure the net is covered at all times. So for me, I don't understand goals going in on him. So I just don't think he's as good as everyone thinks he is. But he can't take away trophies, right? Your name's on it forever. When you look it up on the internet, it'll be listed the year that you won it. So he's won a Vesna. He went to a cup final with Pittsburgh. He technically went to a cup final with Dallas. Um, but I would like to point out that Dwayne Rollison was also a very good goal, very good goalie at the end of his career in Tampa Bay. Other goalies have looked really good in Tampa Bay. And I think the only consistent thing we can find from, in my opinion, below average goalie to below average goalie to now a really good goalie in Vasilevsky is that Victor Hedman stands in front of them for almost half an hour a game. I think that's spectacular. So we can talk about Morgan Riley having to babysit Cody CC last year. We can talk about everyone likes to call TJ Brody Morgan Riley's $5 million training wheels because for some reason our number one D still can't really look like that number one D. I don't think he's been bad this year. I just, I think it's going to be hard to win a cup or compete without a guy that can absolutely dictate that back end. And I know teams have done it in the past. They've won it with their offense. But I don't think that we can undervalue the fact that Victor Hedman was babysitting Zach Bogosian, who's now in our third pair. Yeah, we can have two $5 million D on our first pair and then not really equate to the same comfort let's call it comfort because that's all it really is right now because pucks go in your team scores the other team scores things happen you can break down the play as it is but I don't know if I look at that and I go I'm 100% confident every time they're on the ice that we're not going to get scored against and it doesn't matter who the lineup matches like if they're playing that first or that second line there are good players all around this league but I would like to see someone I, w- I would like the Leafs to have that. And I don't know if it's going to happen right now. I don't think it will happen right now. Might have to come in another five years. But I just think that we really don't know how good defensemen are until you realize that the below average people around them are actually looking quite good. Their inflation is high. So I don't know how you feel about that. I know you like Riley. I know I like Riley too. I've always liked him. It, uh, to me, it's not a matter of specifically Riley. To me, it's, you mentioned it before, it's the concept of defense by committee. And my, I, I believe that you don't need one specific player to be way better than the rest in defensive end, as long as you've got six competent defensemen in every night. 
you've got a chance because you got defense by committee and you you reduce the amount of liabilities on the ice. Whereas last year we had Cody CC, we had uh, Martin Morinson in at times where like other teams would specifically exploit their side of the ice because they knew that we had liabilities. This year we don't have liabilities. As far as Morgan Riley on an individual performance, I just looked up his stat. I didn't know this about him. I was going to defend him. But Leafs plus minus, where does Morgan Riley sit? Currently this season? We're only 10 games in. Where is he in plus minus? Give me like a – you can either give me where he is on the team or give me a number where he is plus minus. He's dash. Dash what? High single digits. Not that bad. He's a dash four. Okay. In 10 games where the Leafs are seven, three and one, eight, three and one. I don't know. We're – we're playing very well, but Morgan Riley, our, our alleged best defenseman, is minus four. Mm-hmm. Now, the player one better than him is minus one, and there's a lot of them. So it's a three, it's a minus three differential, and the only player that has a worse plus minus than him is Wayne Simmons at a dash six. Mm-hmm. So he is the second worst plus minus on our team. Now, a lot of people hate that statistic. I hate it. Like, I really hate it. I, really I hate, hate that it. statistic, but we're a winning team. Yes. And he's a minus. I like four. the statistic. Ooh, words are hard. I like the statistic when Edmonton wins 8-5, McDavid has four or five points, and he's a dash one. I like it then. Yeah. Not because I don't like Connor McDavid. I just kind of don't like how that, like, that number doesn't show – everything you need to know about like you you'll never you'll never funnel this game into one stat or even a bunch of them they'll help tell a story for what you see and i think that's where everyone has to kind of like come together on it we can watch hockey together as fans as scouts as anybody professional unprofessional leisure business whatever watch the game and then kind of see what you think whether it's about a team or a player and you want to form your opinion and you can help back it up. So like you were about to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the plus minus as, as the stat to back up Morgan Riley. I think there's better numbers out there far deeper analytics that could probably help back it up. I'm just saying if you line up every team's line up, every team's best defenseman and where would he sit in this league? It's not, I don't think it's in the top half. Here's my rebuttal. Go ahead. Is Morgan Riley playing up to his full potential? Perhaps not. But what is his potential? Well, that's what I'm getting to. Morgan Riley had a season of 50 points. Okay. That same year, we had another defenseman with 50 points, Jake Gardner. So we know that he can be a high flying offensive defenseman and be able to help put the puck in the net. That year, when both Gardner and Riley had 50 points, we probably had one of the worst defensive teams in the entire league. Okay. Everyone has been talking about how bad the Leafs defense is. And so really having 50 point defensemen, what does that help if you're trying to work on defense? Sean Keith comes in and he's preaching that we need to be a defensive first team while Morgan Riley isn't showing up as much on the score sheet as he should or could, because we know that he could add more. Even though he's a dash four, our defense is significantly better. And Morgan Riley, who's always been an offensive minded player, remember in that draft year with what was he with the um, was he the D draft? Yeah, I mean, that was the Akapov. He's, he's no. always been, yeah, it was the Akapov year. No, he's always been Nugent Hopkins year. No, no, it was no, it was the Yakupov Yakupov year. because Brian was. Burke was talking about how. Yeah, yes, was yes, the yes, worst yes, interview yes. he's ever had. And yes, Morgan yes, Riley yes. was his first overall pick all the way. He's mm-hmm. always been an offense first defenseman. He is sacrificing his own style of play to work on defensive end. And it's showing that it works. We're a defensive team now. We've shown that we can play defense. We've been in tight defensive matchups already this year. And our team is succeeding. We're first in the league. Mind you, we have the most games played, but we're winning. 
So could yeah. you really say that Morgan Riley is playing not up to his potential? We don't need him to score 50 goals. We don't, or 50 points well, rather. Well, like I like I said, it's not a number. It's comfort. Like if you watch if you watch Tampa play, if you watch Nashville play, and you're watching Yossi or Hedman, you're comfortable with them on the ice. I don't actually, I don't remember. I think Brian Leach might have been the last time there was a Maple Leaf defenseman on the ice where you're like, we'll get the puck out and we'll probably maybe score a goal or at least have a scoring chance, but there's no way they're scoring right now. I love Thomas Caverlet. That's my guy. That that's not my but yeah, he's <laughs> we all loved him because he could just slide the puck 18 feet to McCabe and it was always a goal or something happened that was fun. Yeah. Or he barely moved his feet coming out of the zone and his stick was at his belly button. He just snapped a pass, you know, up ice. And yeah, we all love Caberlet, but I'm talking about like one of those D where it's like Norris, those D that, and, and Norris does not equate points for as much as they wanted to. And there was, there was a convert. I don't know. I was listening to a podcast, but they said if forwards are being graded, MVP is MVP. And then you have the Art Ross and you have the Rocket Richard. Should there be a best defenseman and then highest scoring defenseman trophy? I really think there should be. I don't see the problem. There should be. Because I hate that it gets merged into the two where you're like, oh, John Carlson's the best defenseman in the league. And it's like, "Mm, no, John Carlson scores a lot of points. It doesn't mean he's the best defenseman in the league. He's the best forward playing on defense. Essentially. Yeah. Essentially, right? And that doesn't mean he's the best defenseman. We're, we're, we, we can't, this league, for as much as they want to turn into an offensive league and they want the goals and they want the highlights and they want all that those eyes on the sport when, you know, McDavid gets to do what he does and Kale McCarr last night gets to do what he did, which was fantastic. Like, I don't know how he didn't pop an ACL out or, you know, he did it. Like, you want to see that from all the players in the league, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you've lost a little bit of what it means to be an actual really good defenseman. And well, that's not about helping your team score a goal. It's about doing it on both ends of the ice. And I think nobody does that better than Victor Hedman. Right. And he, I mean, he showed that in last year's playoffs too. He stepped up because normally he's like a defensive guy. He's a shutdown, huge body. And he was putting up points like it was nothing. But for me, I don't care what the NHL deems is the best defenseman. And I don't care who the best defenseman is in the NHL anyway. I care about winning a Stanley Cup. And that's what all of Leafs Nation cares about. And that's what this team cares about. Yeah. And so... Morgan Riley is doing his job in making this team win. We don't care if he's going to be nominated for a Norris or not. I don't care how he compares against other defenses. But will that be the recipe that gets the cup here? So let's why, why don't why don't we do a fun exercise? Let's break down the most valuable. Let's go right into pairs, right? Let's go first line, all four lines, all three D pairs, and then your goalie and your and your backup goalie. What is the mm-hmm. most crucial thing you need to win a Stanley Cup? Top pair D, first great first line, great starting goalie. I would go between those three, right? Which one? Which one do you put at the top of the pile? It's that's a difficult question. I know you're trying to make it seem like an easy question for me, but I I honestly opinion based. Opinion based. uh, Well, opinion based. I mean, I'm looking at. I'm looking at Stanley Cup champions of the past and yeah. every team has a different build. Some have like an Andre Vasilevsky in net, but some can just outscore their opponents like Pittsburgh did. They had Matt Murray in net. So, but Murray and they well. didn't have defense. Latang was out. So, I mean, listen, my, I, I tell him, I, 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 my brother's 10 years younger than me. He watches hockey, he played hockey, all that. Um, I tell, I told him at the beginning of the year, if you want to, we were doing little baby predictions on who the top four teams in each division would be without a game being played. So you can't see anything. You don't know who had a great off season, who's going to be ready for a January start, all that stuff. And in my mind, and what I told him was in your own opinion, we don't have to agree on the opinion, but I would go like this decor decor. So find the best decor in that division. If you think there's a tie, go to the starting goalie. If you think there's a tie again, go to the head coach. And then you go to the forward group. Those are That's the way I would build it around. Yeah, I because, yeah see, I know you would. But that's what I'm saying. That's where my head goes. I would go with my decor. I would go with my goalie. Because if you can't get scored against, you're at the very least, you're not losing the game. You're, but we're talking about hockey and yeah, 
hockey as a sport it, it's so unpredictable on any given night that you cannot rely on oh we're just not going to let them score on us because Goals happen inherently with the That's sport. That's not what I with, said. With, well, well, it's something like basketball. You can play fundamental defense and they're going to miss their shots because it's it's just a different style of game and there's so high scoring that you can minimize the damage. Whereas in hockey, you need to be able to score to offset the goals that are bound to come against you. If, if that's your theory, I mean, to me, Carolina Hurricanes have the best defensive core in the NHL and they've shown that they can go relatively far in the playoffs. Haven't done anything too successful this year i mean other defensive teams the columbus blue jackets shut us out two games against a high-flying yeah, offense just because they year, shut us out doesn't mean that they're strong them. defensively no just because they did it to the leafs they got put on like a little pedestal oh. and that doesn't no Seth no jones no. ryan murray they've got yes defense. good defenseman Lorenzi. ryan murray's gone ryan murray's gone ryan murray got shipped out to, to new jersey yeah i know but like year. not nothing so like no one like star studded but yeah seth jones and and Zach Wierenski. Dallas Stars made it to the cup, but they could not out defend an offensive team like Tampa. The, they so have the saying, best offensive decor. Dallas has Dallas has eighteen forwards on that team. Klingberg, have you seen Klingberg play defense? Klingberg no and way. Heiskanen. Heiskanen is the best skating defenseman in the NHL, bar none. Up and down the yeah. ice, I would take that guy all day long, but. His defense at 20 years old, 21 years old, their I would expect it defensive because they need to be because they have five offensive players on the ice at all times. That doesn't mean they have the best decor. You said it no, at the beginning, but... and we're going to stick with that agreement right there. Carolina, one through six on their decor, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Just even and solid, and they can get the puck out and they can defend. They can get hemmed in for a bit and still limit their chances against. They can. You know, they can create offensively as well. They're good on both blue lines, okay? But in, then in go, a series, you might... who do you think would win a series, Carolina or Tampa Bay? Five-game, seven-game series, Carolina or Tampa Bay. There's no chance you are telling me that Carolina would be Tampa Bay in a seven-game series. And if you're saying that defense is the most important to have a solid defensive group, whether that's the top two, what was my next? What was my next category? Goaltending, which Vasilevsky has the edge over James Reimer. Of course he does. Or but, Mrazic, not not or Mrazic. Yeah, not you don't Reimer. even know who the starter is. It's that bad. No, but. it's Mrazic. You're not starting Reimer, but at this, it's not an edge. It's a it's a there's a gap. No, but my my point is that your first priority is defense. And that defense isn't able to keep the puck out because their goaltending isn't good enough. So obviously the defense doesn't outweigh the goaltending situation right like if you've got a bad goalie in net it doesn't matter what six you've got in front of them who did carolina lose to in the playoffs carolina there might have been one tampa no no it wasn't yeah it was tampa was it tampa i'm pretty sure it might have been tampa no shradnikov though that kid's a game changer game changer or not tampa bay was going to win that cup yeah, they were built. They were built better and a little bit more ready. They've had guys who had been there before. Honestly, just, you know what? I hope they meet in the playoffs. I'll take Carolina. I would take Carolina this year to beat Tampa Bay. I would. I would. And it's not for the sake of my argument, Sam. Right? I think that it's not going to be a four or five, even six game sweep of Carolina. I think that they can actually, over a seven game series, wear down Tampa Bay. And I think it would be never said sweep. I think Carolina. Okay, no, I, I know, but you're making it sound like they don't have the chance of beating them, or I would never take them to beat them. I would take. I am saying them. that they're granted they got a they have goal. the best defensive core in the NHL, but because yeah. of their goaltending situation, could not keep the puck out of the net enough to beat a offensive, well-rounded. Did we find team. out if it was Tampa? Was it Tampa? Did they lose we can't. I'll, I'll look into it. But your argument was that the first area that you should address on a team is the top four defense, because that has the most impact on the game. Well, if you don't have the goaltending to support it, it's not, it's not enough. Yeah. So you got to Whereas find like that blend you've got of a well-roundedness. Three, yeah. Obviously well-roundedness make, makes a difference, but if you've got a top six that can play high pressure offense, can lock it down defensively, that's going to outweigh defensive structure. I would say your forward group is the most important group. Look at this. Look at the Stanley Cup winners. We've got 
the Ovechkin win with Washington. We've got the Stamkos Kucherov, although Stamkos wasn't even there. Kucherov point in Tampa Bay. We got Malkin Crosby in Pittsburgh. We've got uh, with the St. Louis Blues. You had O'Reilly. You had Tarasenko. No, you didn't. Tarasenko didn't play. Out. Alex Steen, who's now retired. St. Louis won that cup based on the fact that their goalie played phenomenal, that Craig Berube made sure that they played their D zone better than they played that offensive zone and just knew that the goals would come. And you can listen to any interview with Berube. You can listen to O'Reilly talk about that cup run. They played, they played straight line hockey to the puck, stopped the attack as soon as possible, and they had a really good goalie to make sure that the puck wasn't going to go in when, you know, the other team tried a little bit harder at times because that's what the game's about. Everyone's trying hard. So who's going to try a little bit harder at certain points? And I think if your D is constantly outweighing the offense, I think you're going to be okay. I really do. I really, really do. Carolina went out lost to... last year, not against Tampa Bay. Oh, no. To Columbus? Nope. To whom? The Boston Bruins. Ooh, really good decor last year. Chara, McAvoy, Grizzlick. Tori Krug, Zidane Chara. Two, well, two Garrasco wasn't even in that. Miro Halak, who I, I would take Halak as a starter in Carolina. I would. I would. I would. Oh, in Carolina. Yeah, he outweighs Reimer and Mrazek. Mrazek. Yeah. Although he's getting old. 